Hey, this is Chris with Audio Discovery. So there was a question that got put to um, us in the uh, Discord, uh, the Cakewalk Discord, that was asking, uh, how do uh, we implement uh, pitch shifting uh, for individual clips and or individual sections? And there is a way that we can do that um, by clipping parts out uh, if you wanted to uh, create different levels of, um, you know, different like pitches or whatever, right? So if you wanted to pitch percussions, which seemed like the, what the person wanted to do, um, or, you know, just basically trying to sort of create within um, a track that you could use um, in the individual tracks, you could use processing on clips rather than on the actual track. So here I have the end of Living for the City by uh, Stevie Wonder, Inner Visions, and the reason I wanted to do that was to sort of show the process of clipping out different uh, parts of a track and then um, this is a track that has, let's take the, um, the grid lines out. So if you see, this is a, uh, track that is whole, uh, the wave file has not been split up at all. And the end has a continuous, um, so it's got a continuous vocal line, um, that holds. And so that's why I wanted to use that so that I could show sort of the pitching, because if we're talking about, I was going to use, um, as you see, I had some toms that I was going to show, uh, but the clipping out process is also important. And so I wanted to show, de demonstrate that. Okay. So I have my snap and the snap is going to, uh, align, um, with certain sections here. Now, the other part is, uh, this may help if we have the, uh, the grid lines just so that we can kind of see what's, what's happening. Now, if we hear the end of the song, uh, let I'll play it for you here. Okay. So we have two vocals that are happening there. We can see, um, that part and look to see how we can split that out and then pitch different clips rather than having to uh, put the um, the pitch shifting on the effects. Uh, one of the ways of being able to change pitch um, is the transpose uh, uh, here, but um, I think that there's a better option in using uh, the kilohertz um, uh, pitch shifter. So if we use uh, kilohertz pitch shifter on the main effects, that's going to uh, shift all of the uh, all of the pitch um, of the whole thing. So when we uh, want to uh, pitch up either by uh, whole um, um, you know half note intervals uh, versus like sense or something like that. That's why I would suggest using the pitch shifter rather than um, transposing using the Cakewalk software. Um, okay, so first off is when you're here, um, I'm going to split uh, when the vocals break out and do their own thing. So that's gonna be here at the 220 measure mark, but you can do it at any point. You can unsnap it and do it wherever you want. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to uh, split it here. And what I did was I clicked um, where I wanted to and hit the S button. So clicking the S button, then that gives me the um, ability to just make the split with um, the uh, uh, split the whole thing. <laughs> so I'm going to um, actually just delete this part. OK, so now we're just working with this here now. Um, I'm just going to split this randomly. Okay. So we're going to just do here, uh, here and here. Okay. So now we have, um, let's make this a loop. Um, so let's go ahead and loop that. All right. So we've got basically just sort of like this loop. 
Okay. Um, so each one of these individually will have, if we just drag from the plugin folder here, now what that means is that I'll just shift this up um, by a, a, um, a fifth. Okay, so then you see, it sounds ridiculous right now, it's just not in the great context, but this is just to demonstrate. So when we, when we shift to each one, then we can make... Uh, so that way you can do, you know, however you want the, uh, however you want it to, to split. Okay, so... Um, and, uh, I mean, there may be some, uh, crossover that you can do in order to kind of make it a little bit more mellow, uh, flow into each other. Uh, right now these are split out and then they get processed individually, but this is essentially sort of a way that you can, um, kind of work with, um, you know, different like loops or you can do, um, not just pitch shifting, but you can also do, you know, things like dynamics or, you know, however you want to affect the signal, you can, um, you know, you can apply it to the actual clip rather than to, uh, the effects chain. So that's what I meant to demonstrate. Okay. So hopefully that was somewhat helpful. Um, I know that there was a lot context to add, but, um, really I just wanted to sort of demonstrate how, uh, the utility of being able to sort of clip something out and um, instead of using the transpose, um, what actually, let's do that. All right, so let me undo everything. Okay, so let's clip that out again. So I'm going to split these sections and then go to uh, process and transpose. So let's transpose. And so you can see how much really your transposing doesn't really have very much control over it. So it's essentially, and also it processes the audio. So it runs through and changes the actual waveform. Okay, so, but you don't really get a lot of uh, control with it, right? So if we go back to, oops, to transpose, um, yeah, I mean, you don't really have a whole lot of, um, you don't really have a whole lot of options. So, um, yeah, just much better to use a pifter. Then you can, um, you can change the, you know, and also keep in mind that you can automate, uh, in that same, um, so you can change. Okay, so, um, so yeah, there's a lot of different ways that you can, um, you know, you can mess with your audio, and instead of using the transpose function, you can do that. Um, also, keep in mind that, what well, like we said before, um, it doesn't have to be the uh, pitch shifter itself. You can use, um, you know, other effects so that um, each one of your clips uh, is. Um, is, is different. So um, also keep in mind that you can use this in context with other, um, you know, with other uh, productions. So like thinking about it from like a uh, production standpoint, um, you know, there's, um, you know, you can add it to, you know, like in this case, we sort of created a, a loop, but it wasn't really a loop. It just, um, it was just sort of like a demonstration that, you know, we could sort of cut it up um, in time and then, you know, kind of add little uh, things to it. So it sounded terrible. Totally understand that. But just there's a lot that you can do with it if, uh, you know, if you have the, uh, the imagination for it. Okay, so that's my demonstration and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.